OpenFPL is a potential altcoin gem that's launching right now on the internet computer at Launchpad. I'm going to give you a complete honest review of OpenFPL right here that I hope will help you decide if you're interested in participating in this and you'll want to see all of this ideally before you buy any of it. If you want to invest in this, obviously this is educational material for you to do your own research. This is on the internet computer launch pad right now where if you go over to your tokens in the network nervous system and click on launch pad and open FPL, it is right here. So first off, what is this and what kind of potential does it have and will I be investing in it? This is a decentralized fantasy football. We're talking football as in United Kingdom, football also known as soccer in the United States of America. There is a fantasy premier league or FPL that is big already, but that is very centralized. So the idea with this is to be a counterpart to the existing Fantasy Premier League, or if you search FPL and scroll down to fantasy.premierleague.com, this open FPL is intended to be a blockchain, fully on-chain alternative to this centralized and very popular offering. So they're not affiliated in any way that I know of, but what we can see is that this has clear validation. And uh, I've found some areas in this where I think it adds a lot of value being open. One thing, first impressions I really like about this is that open FPL, the token holders themselves are going to get to vote on the values of the players in the game. So if you don't know, I might need to back up a little bit. Fantasy football is where you're basically making a team of football slash soccer players and uh, you then there's rewards for having your players perform better than everybody else. Now in the existing fantasy premier league, they set how much the players cost to buy and they determine what exactly how the players get their points. On open FPL, one of the biggest changes is that this is 100% on chain, that the token holders will have real control over the code that operates this and the token holders will be able to vote on the value of players among many many other things so this looks very exciting if you are into fantasy football already then this definitely is something you would want to take a look at however i personally am not planning on participating in this because i'm not into fantasy football already and i'm not looking to get involved with it and i believe in only investing in things that i actually use and would want to participate in and take a very active role i believe in having a very small restricted portfolio of things i really care about and participate in like open chat for example which i use every day it makes sense to have that in my portfolio whereas this I think this is an outstanding project and I really hope it succeeds, but it's not something I personally would be using so I, I wouldn't make sense to invest in it. However, I think because the way this works, because we need it, imagine having part of the ownership in something that could become like the, the blockchain version of Fantasy Premier League, this could have some really good potential and this could be an altcoin gem. So let's talk about the tokenomics next and we're going to go through the uh, SNS decentralization sale form post. We'll look at the GitHub here. We'll look at the white paper, their open chat group, the founder, this the funded project, and more on X. First, the tokenomics and the value of this. The minimum direct commitment is 100 ICP, which is smart. They wanted to make sure that the sale definitely succeeds. The maximum commitment is 1 million ICP and they're selling 25% of the total supply. That means that the maximum value this could come out at at launch based on direct ICP committed is 4 million ICP. If we look at the other coins to get an idea of is that reasonable, if we look at the price of internet computer today, 4 million ICP, would equal about 50 or so million dollars in market cap for this token upon its launch. If we look at the other tokens on the market, you can see Dragons has a $25 million market cap right now. 
Gold Dow all has uh, close to a hundred or so million dollar fully diluted market cap. Open Chat has about a, a little about the same, like sixty million fully diluted market cap. Origin is over a hundred million. So that would put Open FPL in one of the top projects on ICP, which is pretty ambitious. And uh, that is dependent, of course, on how many people participate. There's also the Neuron Fund to consider, which could put in another 73,000 ICP, although compared to 1 million, that is a relatively small amount. What I think would be the ideal strategy with this, since the swap ends on March 31st, if you're interested in participating, the best thing to do would be to put in towards the end. The smaller, the less amount of ICP that's committed, the more tokens you might get and the better return you might get on your investment. If this gets fully funded, then uh, it's they're going to have a lot of money for the project, but then the returns on it could possibly be less. We'll see. But if I was going to participate, I'd wait towards the end. And if it was getting towards 1 million ICP, like well over 500,000, I don't know if I'd put in or not. But if it was under that and I was also into Fantasy Premier League, then I would participate under those circumstances. OpenFPL already did a successful launch on Funded where they sold around 12 or so percent of the supply for 2400 ICP. So if you participated in the NFT funding campaign on OpenFPL, you are going to get a way better deal than you got on that SNS sale because as you can see here, this would be about 5,000 or so ICP roughly for approximately the same amount as a million ICP. So this potentially means people who participated in that seed round, if, if this were funded 100% to a million ICP, they could be getting, if I did my math right, about a 200x on their NFTs campaigns on funded, assuming those were actually available. It says the first neuron will have a zero dissolve delay, and then the others will have dissolve delays of one and two years, respectively. If you wanted to pick up some of these cheap, potentially, you might be able to go on idgeek.app once they list these. I just have to tell everyone today that I bought this new internet identity here for 431 ICP on IDGeek. It was very easy to do, and I just have to wait 26 days to get control of it while it's in escrow. So if you're interested in open FPL, it might be a great way to pick up a deal on it if you can snag it after the SNS sale as an SNS neuron directly off the ID Geek marketplace from somebody who's wanting to unload their funded. I've tried to give you some of the important you know, ways to invest and make a little bit more upfront because you should know about that stuff before the SNS. I hope this has a successful SNS because these SNS sales, and it definitely is going forward, but I, I hope there's a good amount of ICP that gets put into this because if you look at the white paper, the plan according to the white paper is to lock up the ICP that the treasury receives for eight years and then to live off of the maturity on it. And what I really like is that the more projects do this, the more we are going to see ICP just getting locked up and continuing to be more scarce. So I love that this project says, according to their white paper, that they'll be putting 80% staked in an eight-year neuron with the maturity interest paid to uh, the ICPFA, which will be under the control, I believe, if I'm understanding this correctly, of the team. That the team will get the interest and that way, they won't have to live off of taking value out of the token. And this to me is a great business model. So the I the IC PFA, and this is on the white paper at openfpl.xyz slash white paper. This says that the IC PFA see oversees the development, marketing, and management of open FPL. So this is the dev team. So keep in mind that 80% of the ICP will be locked up from the sale and the interest will be paid directly to the ICP FA. Now that means that the team could be getting as much if it was a million and there was 800,000 ICP locked up, the team could get as much as 800,000 
times 0.15 or 120,000 ICP a year directly from the Dow to support their own efforts. And at the current ICP price at like 1250 or so, that'd be $1.5 million if the sale went through all the way to support the development. And here's the best part. They would not need to, they're also getting 5% directly from the ICP FA decentralization sale. So this means the team should be very well funded, which means they should not need to drain the token treasury. And like some of these other projects we've seen, they should not need to drain the ICP from the treasury either, which will give the DAO real backing and real value. In theory, if a different development team took over, they could vote through the DAO to pay the interest to their account instead. So this business model to me is extremely bullish for ICP. And obviously the 1.5 million, if it gets half funded, it'd come out to about 750,000 at the current price. Now at the current price seems a bit pessimistic. So this looks like a great setup to fully fund the team to give them a lot of marketing money and to keep the ICP within the ICP ecosystem, which will really help everybody. So the, the way they've set this project up, I'm very impressed. It's obvious that the team behind this and the team looks like they consist mostly of James Beadle. James Beadle has appears to have been clearly watching the other projects, thinking every aspect of this through. He's figured out something that there's definitely a real need for, a decentralized, fully on-chain version of Fantasy Premier League that has a very sustainable business model and is prepared to scale out and bring mass adoption to the internet computer protocol. So this is a, a great project from what I see. And uh, that said, the team themselves, right now, according to the website, you have James Beadle, the founder. James spent his early career building financial solutions in the energy sector and then moved to building interactive experiences for ArcStream up until 2022. So it sounds like he's relatively new in blockchain. And he discovered Internet Computer about a year ago and has been building since then. So this is something else I've been telling you all about ICP. There's a lot of people, especially through my videos in the last few months who've discovered Internet Computer for the first time, and it takes time for developers to build projects. So imagine how many more projects a year from now are going to be launching, because it's taken James a year from when he found ICP to when he's been able to get the SNS sale coming. So right now, the team consists, according to the website, of James Beadle and George Robinson. And George Robinson's a community manager. He's been in crypto since 2020 and part of ICP since 2021, a lifelong fan of all things football, which seems like a really good thing for being the community manager. So the team on this project is extremely small right now. Now, you could go two ways with that. One small team... Do they really have what it takes to build something that could be this big out? And you could take it the other direction that this is a very lean team and a very lean project. And because of that, with the amount of money they've got, if this six sale gets up into significant ICP figures, like in the hundreds of thousands of ICP, this is a very lean team that looks like they could easily be able to focus on building this and spending money on marketing and expanding the team. They've got a very lean setup now that looks like it should be sustainable. So I really, I, I just followed James on Twitter. And if you look back through some of his previous tweets, he has been active in talking about ICP and OpenFPL. He's had hundreds of people tune in to his AMA. And uh, this is why He's built the app here, and James, to me, is an exact example of why I'm so excited about Internet Computer. The James is showing, like on this tweet, there's only one blockchain that you can deploy your dApp to without a bank account, and that's ICP, no middleman. This, this post got 12,000 reach. So from what I've seen about James and what he's posted, James it looks like he's in a great position to 
get this project and in, in a to develop this project in a way that will give great value to investors. Once when all I really care about when reviewing these projects is what is the probability that the investors are going to get a great return because most projects the investors do not get a great return but i like what i'm seeing in the tokenomics on here i like the way this is set up and uh, if i was into fantasy football i would be all over this what's great with the uh, open fpl dow is that the dow incentivizes participation which to me will make this much more lucrative for people to play than the existing fantasy premier league because people will be able to be rewarded for and probably the very best time will be to play the very first season when there's the least amount of people playing when there's lots of tokens to be given out so if you're into fantasy premier league this is definitely something to participate in in terms of get in and get in on that first season because the the dow is going to reward people who make the best fantasy teams and it looks like you should be able to get a nice amount of the tokens for playing in the fantasy league now if you look through the gameplay you have the scoring system is laid out here and i imagine all of this could be changed by the dow and what is great is that the dow holders get to actually decide uh, with proposals on what the value of each player is which is something normally you can't do anything about what i also love with the architecture open fpl is fully on chain and that's one reason i really like it so if you if you look on the upcoming open fpl sns decentralization sale which is linked in the actual open fpl right here you click on this proposal to create service nervous system and then you click here on the forum to go over to that and where this takes you into a post that gives you everything in one clear setup it gives you some idea of why this has so much potential value the open fpl token will be to drive consensus data as well as for transactions for example there's subjective data where in existing fantasy football games you have a centralized entity that defines the value of a player which is often a contentious issue and what i love about this is that this means that people who want to have a say in how much players are worth and the events people who get really enthusiastic will want to stack up the open fpl tokens one of the hardest things to do with these sns tokens is they give me a clear reason why i would want to buy the token and this to me is a very clear reason you'd, you'd have people who are so into this who both are into crypto and want to invest and would accumulate the token so that their votes could have a significant impact on how much players are worth and subjective events for example rather who exactly assisted on uh, is subjective and they're not always agreed on so the token holders will be able to decide what actually counts for points and who gets those points what's also awesome about this is the data for something that is high frequency updates for example what who's on a team etc the open fpl's consensus data allows the football fans around the world to earn fpl for giving fpl open fpl the best sources of information which gives fans a way to contribute and earn fpl and can give fpl the token a higher value and a better experience for everyone participating this is to me the real web 3 vision this is why we're in crypto and web 3 is exciting is because of the ability to really have ownership and and contribute to making those decisions that usually centralized entities own right now you've got the dow treasury is 51 percent of the tokens so the decentralization sale will give you about half of what is available to everyone as we saw the seed funders got a great deal as much as a 200x for grabbing that funded nft so i'm going to look more into some of these projects on funded.app because th this is 
pretty sweet how early you could have gotten into that. James did say on the proposal that the minimum funding target will be 500k ICP, which, as I said with the math before, would provide an estimated 750,000 plus for the development team, which at this point would be him and George. And that obviously would need to cover marketing and expenses and anyone else they would want to hire. So at 500k ICP, that is very doable, although that's bigger than a lot of other projects we've seen. And so far in the very first few minutes of it, we've got 21,000 ICP in the first few hours of it, which that's significantly less than came into Gold Dow. I noted, however, that James changed the minimum direct commitment to just 100 ICP to guarantee that this will be funded. A big point that I'll repeat again is that the staking, it states here clearly that 80% of the amount raised will be staked for eight years. That said, some other projects have said the same thing, and they've turned out to either, if you wanna go positive scenario, they had to make some adjustments, or they chose to make some adjustments for the betterment of the project. If you wanna go the negative scenario, some of the projects in the past, not that James associated with, but some of the other SNS launches said the same thing or similar statements, and they blatantly did the exact opposite, withdrawing the vast majority of the ICP almost immediately. So I am imagining they, Definity has put controls in so projects can't drain the whole treasury now, which is good for investors. That said, projects can still slowly drain the treasury instead of quickly. So the ICP will be locked in the SNS DAO and the stakeholders look like they have enough from the decentralization sale in theory to make sure that this actually is executed that way. But I'll be very interested to see how this happens right away. And if this goes through, as has been said, that'll be a very good sign for the project. And it will be very good for the longevity of the project, as most of these projects do not have longevity. Liquidity has been a big concern for some of these other projects. And it says here that 10% of the amount reserved will be held for exchange liquidity, which means if there was a million ICP raised, you'd have 100,000 ICP, you'd have a lot of ICP available for liquidity. Again, some of the other projects have not done a good job of this. So James has clearly looked at these other projects, seen where they have went wrong, seen what they did right, and put together a very well done project here. Also, 5% of liquid FPL will be kept for keeping the cycles topped up, which is very important because if this app gets to be popular, it could consume a lot of cycles. Like if you had hundreds of thousands of people signing up on this, that could drain the cycles depending on how the app is coded exactly. It could drain the cycles pretty quickly. James also states that he wants to hire five developers. So I hope that we get a good amount of ICP raised on this because when you're hiring five of these four, three developers and a couple of data and marketing managers, that could add up pretty quickly into the hundreds of thousands of dollars to hire those. It says the developers are going to build out the private leagues feature, which would be fantastic to both have public leagues and then for people to create their own private leagues using all the information and DAO created data. What perhaps is most important in here is that OpenFPL runs 100% on chain with no third party components. This means that the DAO has real control. The app has a single main canister that controls the core data. So in my opinion, this is the only way we have real Web3. If you don't have everything 100% on chain, and if you're using these third party components like many of the other SNS projects are doing, then you don't have something that truly can run without the core development team staying on top of it. So this, is a very good indication because in theory, if somebody else wanted to take over open FPL, all they'd have to do is buy up enough open FPL tokens and then they could make themselves a developer on it. This means the project is really owned by the token holders, which gives real value to the token holders. Again, it's repeated in the disclosure of dependencies. There are no dependencies. The app runs fully on chain and will be fully decentralized after the SNS sale. I also really like that because that means all the transactions, all the cycles that get burned 
all end up bringing value to ICP instead of, for example, some of these other SNSs have their website hosted on Amazon, which means the developers have to pay for it, which means people aren't burning ICP for cycles to actually pay for it. And that means the DAO doesn't have real control. So again, this is the setup I would like to see for every SNS going forward. And I would be extremely hesitant to invest in any SNS in the future that can't do exactly what this has done with having everything fully on chain, no third party stuff, and no, no dependencies to disclose. Because it's all on chain and operates entirely in the ICP ecosystem, this is ideal for security as well to eliminate those third party dependencies. Scouse Will on Twitch says, do you think regular FPL players could find it? What they're planning to do, if you look in at the marketing, they are intending to, once the SNS gets launched, and they're intending to have a comprehensive online marketing campaign, which should be pretty easy to do with things like Google ads, where you can target people who are into fantasy Premier League, and then show them ads for open FPL, and they're reserving, and it looks like they should have, as long as the community invests in it, an abundance of funding to do paid marketing campaigns. And they're also planning things like in-person event marketing strategies, etc. So something like this should be pretty easy to do the marketing for because you know exactly who the audience is and the online advertising tools are there to get a hold of them. If you look at the roadmap, They've also, one of the main things they're looking to build out are private leagues where you can start your own open FPL community within the DAO and you can create a private league for just one ICP, which that this is awesome where you essentially can run your own league but use all the existing tools. They're also working on an open chat integration and an open FPL podcast and, and a mobile app launch as well. By August, the Open FPL first season begins, and this will probably be one of the most lucrative seasons to participate in that it ever has. And they're looking into the future with having some AI support where you could add additional functionality with AI. They do have an open chat community, which has about 700 members in it, which is a good sign compared to some of the other SNS projects that have had much smaller open chat communities. It looks like they're getting a lot of positive reviews as well on the Open FPL DAO page. They're sharing and they've partnered with both Juno and OpenChat for sponsorships in the ICP community as well. For example, here's a review by C Infinity it says amazing project compared to its massively successful Web2 counterpart, a market leading game in a rapidly growing industry, one year in development, Docs team, solid roadmap. Real world assets, multiple revenue streams. Zach Z Zant says this is a future unicorn beginning of the SNS summer sale. And I think projects like this are going to be a big part of ICP absolutely booming. And we've seen an acceleration of projects launching now. And based on what we've seen before, we should keep seeing more and more like this as well. I personally have talked to several developers and team leaders who are planning to launch projects on ICP and we haven't seen any of those yet and they take months and months and months to get prepared. In conclusion, this is one of the best project launches I've seen on internet computers so far. This is one that I think is going to add a lot of value to the internet computer community and out of all these previous SNS launches, I think this has one of the best potential to succeed. I love the vision on the white paper where they talk, James talks about how football is the most popular sport in the world with billions of fans, and the leading fantasy football game has over 10 million players a season. Meanwhile, Open FPL is a better, more equitable, decentralized fantasy football platform. And with this 100% on chain, this is giving real value to users. James explains internet computers, the only computer system in the world that allows users to truly own a service. And this is why I just stacked up hundreds more ICP myself today. And I see that this project, while OpenFPL itself is exciting, and I hope this succeeds, and I hope football fans fund this project 
to me, this is most bullish for internet computer. When you have projects like this launching, we're going to see so many more similar projects where people launch USA, National Football League equivalent, decentralized US fantasy football products. We're going to see so much more launch like this on internet computer. And according to the white paper, we can expect the vast majority of the ICP people put in is going to get locked up. It's going to provide an indefinite paycheck for the development team. The token's going to have a lot of utility. And this is open to participation if you're in the USA or Canada without having to use a VPN, which is really nice. So if I had any interest in Fantasy Premier League, I would definitely probably put like 50 ICP into this. Although I might just try and grab a neuron with one of the seed investors off of funded instead of I, I might balance it out. I might put maybe 50 ICP into this directly and then see if I could grab a neuron from any of the funded app users. So I really, this is a five-star project to me, one of the best launches we've seen on here. And uh, if I didn't already have enough other projects and a commitment to keeping my portfolio as simple as possible in places where I could constantly invest and add value myself, I would absolutely put into this. I have not been given anything to make this video, which has enabled me to just make an honest, comprehensive, real review here with you. If you want more like this, I am a full-time YouTuber, full-time Twitch streamer, and I think there's lots of altcoin gems for you on internet computer. If you want more like this, if you haven't already subscribed to my crypto reviews channel on YouTube, I film this live on Twitch. If you've never used Twitch before, give it a try sign up for it. It's free and you can watch my live streams right when they happen. You can ask questions. And if you want to chat more while I'm not online, you can go to open chat or discord. If you want me to get to know you schedule a one on one video call. And I've got a bunch of other channels on YouTube that I think you'll enjoy. You can see my life story and go beyond just Jerry the crypto guy and my autobiography channel. If you're into self help personal development and want to think how I think subscribe to my thoughts channel. If you are a YouTuber, a content creator, you'd like to be, I just made a brand new channel just for creators. I made a full length course with that I just put out a full length free YouTube course that I just put out on this channel. And uh, I'm making some music and I also do gaming. I do have merch as well and more on jerrybanfield.com. So thanks a lot for watching this and uh, I'll keep answering questions for people that are on the live stream.